I'm Allison Bogie, and this is my context book report for the Hyperlink Library, Library 287, Fall 2013. This is the book that I'm going to be talking about, Makers, The New Industrial Revolution by Chris Anderson. And please forgive my low-tech presentation, but I just thought it would be fun to record this. Um, the reason I chose to do that is because I wanted to read this book and it wasn't available in hard copy from the library in time, but there was an audiobook, so I decided to listen to it on this handy little device. Turns out you can read in the car and walking. It was a lot of fun. And the reader was great, and the tone was very conversational, so I wanted to carry that thread over into my book project. So, to get started, makers making, maker spaces, make magazine, the book makers by Cory Doctorow available to download, fab labs, hacker spaces. These are words that we're hearing all the time and we're hearing them inside the context of libraries and out of the context of libraries. And we're hearing them more because the concept of making and the maker movement is on the rise. Chris Anderson writes about this in his book and he starts out talking about how manufacturing has changed. How has manufacturing changed? It has changed because before we had the whole, all the tools that we have today, it used to be that an inventor would invent an item, patent it, and then have to find a company who wanted to manufacture it, creating all the tools that were needed um, and all the machining to manufacture it, and pay royalties to the inventor. Inventors were inventing amazing things and getting them patented, but often really not making any money off of them or not very much money off of them. But with the, all of the tools we have now for creating things, that's completely different. Inventors can invent and then they can produce. Inventors can be entrepreneurs now. And that's what makes this a revolution. Um, now you can get a patent or not get a patent and create something and start printing it out or send it away to a factory and get 5,000 of them printed, sell it on Etsy. Things are really, really different now. So why is it a movement? Well, I talked about that a little bit, but Anderson talks about how the maker movement has kind of come as part of the cycle of the DIY movement. He talks about his experience in garage bands in the 70s and how they were playing music and making their own tapes and making their own zines. And then that same DIY spirit, as soon as the web started exploding, really moved online to blogs and websites and digital music. Um, it's not just music, but that's the example he gives. And then he argues that people wanted were excited by the digital and the what he calls bits, but they wanted to do things with their hands again and do those tangible things and create something. It's so cool to create a zine or to make a mixtape. It's really a great feeling to have made something yourself. And so that is, in his opinion, where the maker movement has really sprung from. So this was a question that I had, why are people making in the library? As I said, I've been very aware of the maker movement and many of the things that are going on. I did learn a lot more about the actual fabrication methods in the book, but I keep puzzling over why the library? Now that I say that and having read this book, it seems kind of silly, but I started just using Google, looking around, and I found an article from American Libraries Magazine um, published in January or February of this year about the ALA midwinter meeting and the fact that there was a big focus on maker spaces, which I know ended up being very popular. And what the article said is a quote that I want to read. It said, maker spaces are a technological leap past library knitting and quilting circles where patrons and experts have often come together to learn new techniques and train others. Um, and the, the article goes on also to talk about how 
makerspaces do what libraries have always done for us. Two things. One, they give us a reason to come together and do something, learn, watch something, experience something new in the library. But they also do the same thing that having a whole library of books does. Libraries have huge collections of things that no one can own by themselves in their house. Um, and no one would really want to have quite that many of any one thing. But we want to access them. And so the library creates a place where we can do that. And um, makerspaces do the exact same thing. It creates a place where there can be many tools that we wouldn't necessarily have in our own houses unless we specifically had a workshop. It actually made me think of the Berkeley Tool Lending Library in my town where I live. And um, I watched a video about the Tool Lending Library. It had a great quote from a patron. The patron said, there's no way you can have every tool you need in your house, but this place seems to have every tool in the world. Um, and it was exactly that same spirit. I can't have all of the stuff that I need, but the library has it and I can just borrow it and bring it back. So the, at the Tool Lending Library, yes, there's a patron community, but people take their tools, go work in their gardens, their houses, their businesses, and bring them back. Well, with the maker spaces, what makes it such a powerful part of participatory library services and Library 2.0 is that people come into the library to use those tools and create community around that. So Makerspaces are absolutely a powerful part of the participatory library, and the implication is that libraries should all be building makerspaces. All new libraries should have makerspaces, and we should be looking at places that are remodeling their space and putting in hackerspaces, makerspaces, as examples for all the rest of us. I have one more question. What's the deal with 3D printing? So I'm embarrassed to say a colleague asked me this question the other day, a couple weeks ago, before I had read the book. And I told her what it was, I knew about it, but I couldn't completely explain why it was important. I now feel empowered to explain the power of 3D printing as well as tools like CNC machines, laser cutters, um, and then the digital design software, all the different CAD software, which can be accessed for free online. Um, so I'm very excited about these ideas around making things, and I hope someday I get to work in a library with a makerspace. So this has been my report on Makers, the New Industrial Revolution by Chris Anderson. Thanks for watching.